Hello, this is Robert Cameron Weir. I'm chairman of the Publications Committee of the New Hampshire Society of Genealogists, and I'm here talking with Edward E. Ted Steele, the author of The Low Family of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, descendants of Joseph Forlow of Essex County, Massachusetts, will be appearing in the upcoming soon to arrive in your mailbox, volume 32, number one of our New Hampshire genealogical record. Hi, Ted. Thanks for joining Hi. us. Hi, Bob. Thanks for having me. So we're here talking about your article, and before we get into it, I just want to talk a little bit about your background in genealogy. Um, how long have you been doing genealogy, and how did you get started with it? So I started in 1977, when I was in my mid-30s. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles, and when I was a child, um, everybody that I knew named Steele lived in my house, my father and my two brothers. Um, and uh, it really started with wanting to answer the basic question, where did I come from? Um, I, I lived in a largely Jewish neighborhood in Los Angeles, and most of my friends were German or Russian or Eastern European, and I wanted to know what I was. So I asked my father, and he said, I don't know, I was born in Cedar Rapids. And his, he said, my father and grandfather also lived in Iowa. So. Uh, that, that answer simmered for uh, a number of years. And then in 1977, the cousin of my then wife visited us in St. Louis, and he had been researching their family. And during the course of his stay, he, uh, he taught me the basics of how to do genealogical research, you know, uh, what the census was and what uh, other records uh, you could use. And so I joined, uh, because I was interested, I then joined the St. Louis Genealogical Society, and I attended their meetings and took their classes. Uh, I also started reading books, uh, Al Greenwood's books on uh, 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 yeah. doing genealogical research. And so I, I both read and attended classes and learned the process. So you start off tracing back your steel, and, and I guess steel's not from New Hampshire. I don't, I don't see that name much around No, here. steel's, uh, uh, I, uh, I've been very fortunate to trace my, my steel ancestry in America back to John Steel, who came from England in 1633. And it was actually, uh, he, was, he was the head of the party uh, that Thomas Hooker sent from Massachusetts down the Connecticut River to find a new community. And he chose a spot, and that spot is now Hartford, Connecticut. Um, and uh, I was able to trace the steels in England back for three generations, uh, back to a, uh, a Robert Steele who died in Fairstead, Essex uh, in uh, uh, 1547. So that was the, the steel side of the family. What's the relationship of Lowe to your family? Um, well, when I said everybody in my house was steel, that was a lie because my mother was Barbara Alice Lowe. And so she was the one who, who got me started on the Lowe family research. Oh, very interesting. So, so, so it sounded like you started off, like I think most genealogists do, they, you start looking at where your grandparents were, great-grandparents were, going back generation by generation, you know, what we call an ascending genealogy, you know, ascending the tree. Um, fewer people take on though the more um, complex task of doing a, a descending genealogy where you take some, you know, maybe immigrant and then um, trace back all their descendants, not just the ones that directly lead to you, but also the third cousins and fourth cousins and such like that. Uh, what led you to undertake a project like that? Well, as we'll, uh, as we'll discuss later, I think once I was able to trace the Lowe family back to Thomas Lowe, who was the immigrant to Ipswich, Massachusetts. Um, Thomas, Thomas had two sons, Thomas and John. I'm descended from John. There's a great deal in the published literature about the descendants of his son, Thomas, and virtually nothing in the literature about the descendants of his son, John. So, so I had... Uh, in, in establishing my connection back to Thomas, I worked with a genealogical pen pal, a guy named Charles Skip Lowe, who lived in Connecticut 
and made a life's work of studying the Lowe families of New England. And so he was able to assist me in some of those earlier Lowe families, but I was, I was determined to get the descendants of John Lowe into print. And that's why I'm excited to have this article in the uh, uh, New Hampshire Journal. I've also, as it mentions, uh, been very fortunate to have the first three generations published in the New England Historical and Genealogical Register. So did you do most of your research from St. Louis? I mean, do they have a, a decent library or repository that you're able to research New England records from there? Well, we do now. Um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the St. Louis County Library uh, inherited the book library of the National Genealogical Society some years ago. So we have, a, we have an outstanding uh, book library uh, here in St. Louis. Also, I mentioned the St. Louis Genealogical Society, and uh, our society had amassed a wonderful library over the uh, 50 years that they've been in existence, and those are also out at the St. Louis County Library. Um, but when I started doing this research in 1977, there was no internet. So uh, I, I had to do things the old-fashioned way, which was, uh, you know, I would go to, uh, to courthouses and libraries, and as I traveled across the country, I'd stop in and uh, look at endless reels of microfilm, you know, turning the crank. Uh, none of the censuses were online. You have to you had to look them up in the sound decks, which probably people don't know these days what that is, but that was the index and the census records. Uh, so I started off really doing paper reading. Um, also, the, the New England uh, Genealogical Society had a wonderful uh, book loan uh, service for its members where I could write to the New England Society and they would send me up to five books and I could research those. So every time I found a new surname, I would simply notify the New England Genealogical Society and they'd send me the, the genealogy for that surname. And I thought, hmm, this is easy. All I have to do is get all these previously published books. But then of course I ran into the surnames for which they had no book. <laughs> I had to do the work myself. I, I remember that lending program. That, that, was, that was very useful. That combined with the, when the Family History Library was allowing you to order uh, microfilm yes. in the mail, which they did until re relatively recently. Right. Kind of do a lot of this research from almost anywhere. So here we are looking at volume 32, number one, and we see your article right here starting on page five. Let's bring that up. Um, who in this article, in this you know, research, the descendants of Joseph Ford, did you find the most intriguing? <laughs> well, that one's easy. Uh, that would be uh, uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Lowe of the seventh generation who married Jane Norrie. Um, I, I mentioned I got my, my, my mother, from the information I got from my mother, I was able to trace back to a guy named Benjamin Franklin Lowe. And he died in New York City in 1890. And his death certificate said his parents were Frank Lowe and Jane, whose maiden name was unknown. I spent 35 years researching, uh, looking for them, and they don't exist because the death certificate was filled out by their son, who was guessing. Um, so uh, where, where did he get the name Frank from, do you think? Uh, just pulled it out of thin air because I guess wow. because his father, because he knew his father was Benjamin Franklin Lowe, he yeah. his father was Frank. Um, uh. So when I, I, I finally, uh, because of a, a, uh, a newspaper item that I found in San Francisco where Benjamin Franklin Lowe uh, served, uh, 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 submitted a bond for the probate of a guy named Thomas Pickering, who had died in California. And I, the Daily Alta California newspaper in 1852. And you can see there B.F. Lowe is the administrator on the estate of Thomas L. Pickering. So how did, I mean, this, this to me is just an amazing that number one, this record exists, that it survived the 1906 earthquake, which yeah, is not well, a uh, uh, Well, I can't answer that question, but all I know is there's a, there's a wonderful website of California newspapers 
I was sitting one afternoon about uh, eight years ago, just kind of, I was researching other California ancestors. And I said, well, let me see if I can find Benjamin Franklin Lowe. And I had done that before and couldn't find anything, but this time in the search engine, I entered B.F. Lowe. This came up and my heart stopped. And did you have some indication that he w was in California? Oh yeah, I knew Benjamin uh, Lowe. Uh, he he was he was a merchant at that low uh, that Ebbetson company. Okay, uh, they were merchants. They they actually bought goods in New York, sailed them around the Horn, set up shop in San Francisco to sell materials and supplies to the miners in the gold rush. That's how Benjamin Franklin Lowe came to California, but I had never heard of Pickering. So Pickering died in 1852. So the first thing I did after finding that article, I went to the 1850 census online and I located this Thomas Pickering in San Diego, California in 1850. And guess what? He was born in New Hampshire. And I went, aha. So then uh, I was able with the help of a friend to locate uh, Thomas Pickering's mother who was a, a lady named Jane Lowe, who had married Thomas Pickering Sr. Unfortunately, the Pickering genealogy did not know who Jane's parents were, but my friend did. And so my friends, I got an email back from my friend who said, we are connected. Wow. Thomas Pickering's mother, Jane Lowe, was the daughter of Joseph Lowe and Jane Norrie who appear in this article. So they, uh, Joseph and Jane, are my most significant people in this whole article. I also think it's kind of fun that Jane Nori is misidentified in the Norris family genealogy because Jane and her sister appear in that book as Norris family members who can't be identified. Yeah, my, my most interesting record, of course, is that uh, B.F. Lowe administering the state of uh, uh, Thomas Pickering. But, but other than that, I mean, most of the records I found were pretty standard stuff, you know, uh, de uh, deeds and wills and, and so forth. I love wills and, and probate records because probate records give you an insight into the person, especially if there's an estate inventory in the probate packet, you can find, you know, all of the property the, the land and household goods that they own. And it's usually pretty detailed description. But as I was researching the land records um, for uh, one of the Joseph Lowe's, I, I discovered uh, kind of an interesting sale. Uh, a guy from Massachusetts named John Hancock winds up selling land to Joseph Lowe. And on the deed, you can see that famous signature of John Hancock on a low family deed. So I thought that was really quite interesting. There it is. Okay, I have that up here. It, it was interesting because when I first heard that this John Hancock, I'm wondering, John Hancock, what did he have to do with Portsmouth? But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not a name you hear around here much. Uh, but then you kind of see in here, it's... Um, it's clearly the same guy. That's a, <laughs> that's a rather unique signature. Literally, the his John Hancock, but it's a lot of land in Portsmouth. Um, was before the estate of I don't know what was that John Darn Dorn Dean something deceased, and by him mortgaged to my uncle Thomas Hancock deceased. So he he got it kind of indirectly from his uncle who had it via a mortgage, right? And um, eventually he decided to sell it because what does John Hancock need property in Portsmouth for? He doesn't need any any property in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Yeah, and, and get you to, wow, that, that's uh, it's something you popped out. I, I had a, was doing research once in um, vital records of Braintree, Massachusetts. Um, not as close a connection here, but I just happened to be looking up someone's um, ancestor's uh, birth record, and there it is on the same page as John Quincy Adams' birth. <laughs> now, not John Adams, but John Quincy Adams. That's a good second. It's like, wow. Right. Right that's on the fine. same that's page. Yeah. Genealogical serendipity. Might, might have gone to grammar school with him for all I know. Um, so Ted, were there any other especially difficult issues you ran into while doing this research? Well, the one that I find most vexing is uh, uh, 
uh, uh, Richard Lowe's wife, uh, Mary Patterson, who is apparently known as Polly, she was the daughter of uh, a guy named Captain Thomas Pattinson. And people often, I, I guess, confuse that name with Patterson, but it's definitely Pattinson. Uh, Thomas, Captain Thomas Patterson shows up in the Portsmouth, New Hampshire tax rolls from 1754 to 1773. And he's referred in those tax rolls as Captain. Um, and it's definitely spelled Pattinson. Um, I was unable to locate any other significant records for him. And in particular, I have no idea who his parents were. And so that remains frustrating. I assume he just, he suddenly drops out of the, out of the records in um, 1773. And I assume like uh, uh, Joseph Lowe, uh, Captain Patterson probably set, set off in a ship and uh, never returned to Portsmouth. Uh, wow. I, will, I will, I have to mention that one of the great joys in my life, uh, we have a summer home in Maine. And so in traveling from St. Louis to Maine, we, we go through Portsmouth, New Hampshire, which is a town I've often, I've, I've grown to really enjoy. And uh, in Strawberry Bank, which is the ancient part of Portsmouth down by the waterfront, uh, I was actually able to stand at the intersection of the property where Benjamin Franklin Lowe was born. Oh, uh, wow. And, and, to, and to see the, the neighborhood where Benjamin and his father Joseph and his father Richard lived and died in Portsmouth. So that was a real treat. Wow. So, so Ted, um, now that you're pretty much wrapping up your, um, your low research, uh, are there any other projects you're working on? Uh, I do do client research. I'm currently wrapping up a, a book I've been working on for a client for uh, about the last uh, four years. Uh, I also I have to brag, I just finished my own family history book. Oh, wow. Uh, this, this is a book I've been working on quite a tome, uh, uh, 700 and some pages. I've been, I've been researching this, researching this of course for uh, 45 years, but I've been, I've been writing that for the last four years. So that's another fun accomplishment. Uh, I also, uh, there's a wonderful, beautiful, large cemetery in St. Louis, Belfontaine Cemetery. And I am a volunteer at Belfontaine, uh, I, I will receive a burial plot for a family, and I research that family to determine their ancestry and all the who's who links them together. So I've been doing that for the past year or two, and that's, that's a lot of fun. Uh, and what, what does the society do with that? They, they have a website or? Uh, well, this is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is not the St. Louis Gene Lodge Society. This is the cemetery. Oh, the cemetery itself. The cemetery itself. And uh, they, um, they do have a website. Uh, they, I send them a printed report, which they put in the, in the burial file for that family. Um, and I send them all of the, uh, of the, the printed documentation to, uh, uh, you know, to, to document the research that I've done. Um, they, they do have a website. We are working on getting them uh, genealogical software. I use Roots Magic as my software, and I've told them to wait until version eight of Roots Magic comes because it's going to be a whole new interface. So at some point, we'll import all of that into Roots Magic uh, for them. And I, if, if what they do with it, I'm not sure. Hopefully, at some point, it may wind up on their website. Well, Ted, I think that's all the time we have for this afternoon. I'd like to thank you again for um, consenting to uh, sit for this interview today. And thanks especially for writing this article on the descendants of Joseph Bordelow. Um, I'll be getting out your author's copy in the mail very soon. So you can thank enjoy Thank you very much. Day. I look forward to that. Uh, and thank you for setting up this inter interview. I think it's, a, it's an interesting idea. And I, I hope it will go over well with your subscribers. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye.